Hi, this is Darren Lyle. But I'd like to start working on the hands of the character here. Uh, Captain Quark's hands are kind of weird. They're just two fingers and a thumb. It's like some sort of creepy Tyrannosaurus Rex type hand. It looks weird. I mean, it. I never really noticed it. But now that I'm working on it like this, I notice it and it's an odd design decision. But let's go ahead and try and recreate it. So what I'm going to do, I've got the body in the first layer, the teeth in the second, the eyes in the third. I think what I'm going to do is go straight to a new layer and I'm just going to begin creating a finger and then build the hand up from that. So I'm going to come over to the Create tab, create a new cylinder, and for this I only want eight sides and I do not want any cap fill at all here. So now I'm going to rotate around the Y axis 90 degrees, RY90. And I'll scale it up a bit. So this is going to be the first finger here. Um, I'm going to go to edge mode and select these two edges on the top. And those two edges on the bottom. And then extrude. And then scale in the Z with S and Z. And then scale that in like that. There we go. I'll then take each of these points and press Alt-M and merge them in the center like this. And then I'll merge this to that. I don't want it at center. I want it at last. There we go. So it maintains the shape. Alt-M at last there. All right, so there's the finger, and this one, this side is empty because I chose no cap fills. Uh, I'm going to insert two edge loops. I can scroll the mouse wheel and add as many as I want here. I just want two, like that. And I'm going to need an edge loop down here somewhere to kind of hold the tip of the finger like that. I'll also need some edge loops on either side of these joints, so I'm going to create edge loops like this. I mentioned before you need at least three edge loops for every bend or every joint. So there's my three for those two joints. Um, let's go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier now. And I'll take the views up to two. And I'll come over here to the Tools tab, tab back into Object Mode, and click Smooth Shading. I'll pull this center point out some to round off the tip of the finger. I can take these points in a bit, like this. Maybe even pull them up a bit, like that. We can maybe flatten this up just a little bit, like this. And you can begin to kind of shape the finger now here with these points. All right. Um, we can take these edges on the bottom of the finger, right down here. And we can pull those up just to kind of hint at the creases and pads on the bottom of the finger. Um, we can come up here and grab these edges and pull them up just a little bit, just a hair, just a hint at the knuckles there. Um, I feel like I want to pull this point out just a little bit more like this. Round that off a bit. Maybe too much. There we go. Another thing we can do is increase the size of the finger at the back near the hand. So I'm just going to select this row of faces and then I'm going to use this uh, shrink fatten tool and the shortcut key is alt s so I'll just press alt s and then scale that out just a bit and maybe even scale out this edge too it's just a little bit bigger um, I can scale out these faces here for this knuckle, Alt S, and just pull that out just a hair. No, I don't like that. I think I'm going to use the scale tool instead. And what I want to do is scale in the Z and the Y, 
but I don't want to scale in the X. So I'll press S for scale and then Shift X. And now it'll only scale in those axes and it won't scale in the X at all. I guess all there is here is an index finger and a pinky. Uh, so let's just take this now and duplicate it and move it over and that becomes the pinky. Let's select this edge right back here on this new finger and I'm going to move the cursor to it with Shift S and Cursor 2 selected. And now if I move the pivot point to that cursor with the period key, I can scale it down from that point from where the knuckle is. So now let's join the two together. I'm going to choose them both and press Control J and now they're all one object. And now we need to connect these two, say, with these edges here for that webbing between the fingers right there. So I'll just select those edges and press Control E to bring up the Edges menu. And then I'm going to choose Bridge Edge Loops, like that. Now I can come down here and increase the number of cuts. And I'll just increase that to 1. So now to extrude the hand back, we just need to select this edge right here. So I'll begin extruding back. I'll hit E and then just begin moving this back some. And this one, I think I want to bring these edges down here. I need to move my pivot point back. So I'll press Control comma to move that pivot point back to the median point. So I'm going to move that back down like that and then select this edge again. Extrude that again. I'll hit E and pull back. And this time, once again, I'll scale that out just a hair. So we're beginning to get something that looks like that. Looks like I could move these edges out a bit. I don't need them so far in like that. And maybe move these edges or this edge back a bit. I'm going to go ahead and begin extruding back again Actually, what I want to do is scale up in the Z just a hair to hint at those, at the knuckles, at the top of the fingers there. And okay, so now let's keep going. I'm going to hit E and pull it back again. And now, and I am just actually looking at my own hand here, so I'm just holding up my hand and taking a look at it. I think I'd like to begin evening these out now. I'm going to select these edges and pull them up just a bit. So we begin flattening that part out. All right, so let's do it again. Let's extrude back and move it back some. Scale in the Y a hair. I'm going to go ahead and scale in the Z as well and begin to pull these edges or these points up a bit more so it begins to flatten out at the top of the hand. All right, let's do this again. Extrude and move back. I'm going to go ahead and scale on the Z a little bit more to begin hinting at the padding of the hand there at the back. And now let's extrude again, move it back. I'm going to scale it in in all axes. And I think I'm just about there. I think that's where the wrist would begin. So I'm going to go extrude and, and scale this down quite a bit. Let's try this and see how this works. And then I'm going to even this out a bit. Now what I need to do is figure out how to get the thumb on here. And the thumb, I think what I want to do is find four faces that I can use as the hole for the thumb. And it seems like that I could use these four faces right here. So if I hit X and delete faces, now I can begin pulling these around to kind of create a better opening for the thumb like this. Now what we can do is take one of these fingers, say this one, I'll just select these faces here and press Control plus to expand this selection here and now I can just duplicate this with shift D and I'm going to move it to the side here like this. Now I could move it around and get it in place 
while this still being part of the same object and selecting faces, but I kind of want to use um, my global and local transformation tools. So I'm going to split this out into a new object by pressing the P key and choosing selection. Now I've got this as a whole new object and I want to move this pivot point into that object. So I'm going to set the origin to the geometry here. Now I can move this and rotate this. I'll rotate around the Z. Okay, now what I need to do is rotate it down. So I'm going to switch from global to local transformation with alt spacebar and then I'll choose local and that'll now switch to being in line with the object and this is why I split it out to be its own object. I'll go to my rotate tool and I'll just rotate this down a bit and I'll swing it out too because the thumb is really kind of facing outward like this, right? Okay, so now I'll go back to global, alt space, back to global, go to my move tool and move this down some. I'm going to go ahead now and join these two, select them both and press control J and then I will select this edge and this edge and bridge these two together with control E and bridge edge loops. And there we go. Now I can add an extra cut in here right here if I wanted. Uh, I would maybe choose linear for that. So now of course I'm going to need to do some point pulling and maybe even moving around of edges here. So um, if I took this edge and maybe scaled it up just a bit and then took this edge and used control E and edge slide, I could begin sliding that edge around and kind of adjusting how this is going to look. There are some things that need to happen here, like moving these edges out some, like this. Begin moving those out some. I'd need to work with these edges as well to begin smoothing this out. All right. So what I'm going to do is work a little bit more on the hand here, get it adjusted the way I want it, and then what we'll do is we will scale this and move this and put it in place, and then from this back edge of the hand right back here, we will begin extruding the rest of the glove. So we'll begin doing that in the next video. I'll see you then. If you'd like to learn more about Blender, then join me for my Blender Scene Creation course. In it, we'll create this animated scene of a mech descending into an underground tomb. As we go, you'll be introduced to Blender's modeling tool set as we build the mech character and the environment. We'll talk about manipulating objects, the difference between object mode and edit mode, and as we begin modeling the mech, we'll discuss more advanced topics like cutting one 3D object with another using booleans. We'll talk about object origins and parenting, creating geometry with the bridge tool, and creating tubes or pipes with Bezier curves. We'll create the elements of the environment, the pillars, the walls, and we'll add more detailed scene elements along the way. Once the modeling is complete, we'll talk about UV mapping what it is, why it's needed, and how Blender's UV mapping toolset can help you UV map your 3D objects quickly and efficiently. We'll take a look at Blender's Cycles render engine as we add the materials for the mech and the environment. We'll use the free open source image editing program, GIMP, to prepare and edit our textures and apply them to the 3D models in the environment and on the mech. Ultimately, we'll want our character to move so we'll go over preparing the character for rigging, creating the armature, and how to set up an advanced foot roll rig. We'll create custom shapes and make sure all our controls are parented and organized, ready for animating. We'll begin animating our character flying into the scene and dropping to the ground. We'll use Blender's graph editor and dope sheet to adjust the timing, and we'll talk about keyframing and tangents as well. Once our scene is complete and we've animated the character, we'll do some final tweaks to the lighting, as well as have some fun creating a jet flame effect for our mech's jetpack. And in the end, we'll render out the animation and export a movie file. 
bringing an animated scene to life is an amazing process. And once you know how to do it, you can bring any of your ideas to life. So join me for Blender Scene Creation. Learn more at DarrenLyle.com.